Good everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Henry and I'm going to be your guide on our Lumion series. So put on your seatbelt and let's continue. Okay, before we move on, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel for more content like this, hit the notification bell to get notified when we release a new video. Let's move on. Okay, so in the last video, we kind of talked about modifying landscapes in Lumion and editing the landscape and how you can improve the landscape features in Lumion. But in this video, we are going to go into the next phase that is applying materials. Okay, applying materials is very integral in creating a nice render because it actually depicts some of your level of creativity because your ability to combine the right colors and the right materials actually shows your um, capability as a good architect or a good designer. So this is going to be an interesting video and let's hump right on. Okay, so first of all, to edit the materials or to apply materials in Lumion, under this main Lumion menu, you are going to click on this kind of paint pocket icon you dice the material icon so once you click on it of course it will show nothing then you will now start clicking the object uh, before we move on uh, um, in Revit when you are exporting you are export as a TAE file uh, from Revit to Lumio the materials will actually be set in the way you set it in Revit for instance all these materials that I named my wall paints in Revit, I actually named it like that in Revit. So it kind of works with the way, like nomenclature, the way you name it in Revit. So just note that by the way when you are modeling in Revit. Or if you export as an FBX file, it actually works differently. Like it actually like uh, is based on how you modeled it or how you group the modelings together. So that out of the way, let's move on. So first of all, we are going to start by applying our base material. What I mean by base material is like the major material and what uh, um, that will be uh, like prominent throughout the model. So uh, let's just click on this my main white wall. So I'm going to go to Endor. For, for walls, I usually prefer going to under plaster to get the right material for the wall. Then I'll click on let's use this poly stucco. Let's look at the texture. Yes, I actually like this uh, texture. So we're going to double click it to set the material. Now the material is actually looking dull and we are going to modify it. Okay, so we are going to click on it. We are going to set a colorization. Personally, I like making my ma building material application actually cool. So I usually um, change the coloration to a bit of blue and just make it light blue. So it will be like sky blue, although it's predominantly white. But once I make it that much, it will just be white with a tint of cyan uh, kind of stuff. So we are going to reduce the glossiness because we don't want our wall glossy, at least I don't like it personally. And we are going to reduce the reflectivity, we are going to increase the relief, and we are going to reduce the map size. That is, the relief is actually the roughness. So if I reduce the relief, it will become a bit smoother, but if I increase it, it will become a bit more pronounced. And I am going to reduce the map size. Okay, let's just increase it a bit. Okay, I think this is enough. Okay. Now also, in where applying materials, you can also copy the materials from one material to another. So to copy the material, once you have selected the material you have applied, we are just going to click on this copy material. And we are going to copy it to this second base color, my dark wall paint. So I am just going to click on any of this, let's just click on the color, just for it to be able to paste, then I am going to click on paste. Okay, now it's actually the same color with the base color, but I don't want it that way. So I'm just going to modify it. I'm going to reduce this blue color to like towards the dark side in this color um, scheme um, um, tab or menu. So I'm just going to reduce the coloration just so it won't be too blue. And I'm going to change this towards the more of the blue side and increase it a bit. Okay, now we have achieved our two basic colors, so we are going to work on the glass. Okay, for the sake of the time of this video, I'm not going to be editing every single material, but I'm just going to edit some prominent materials and show you how to manipulate it. So another important material is the glazing. So we are going to click, to change the glazing, we can just simply click on the, this to go to the material library. And we are going to click on, we are going to use a plain glass. Why I like using plain glass is that the material is like preset to nothing, so I can edit the glass how I want to. So first of all, I'm going to change this colorization towards gray. I like the colorization being gray. 
so i'm going to increase the reflectivity a bit i like my glazing reflective but i don't like it too reflective so you'll be able to see what is inside the building at the same time the, um, the environment will be able to reflect on the glass giving it a kind of realistic render so i'm also going to copy it for our second type of glass for the mullions uh, I like using dark mullion, so I just use a metal material and I just select this metal material under metals. Don't know if you saw it, I went to indoor metals, then clicked on this second page. Okay, sorry, third page. I selected it. Then I'm going to zoom close, I'm going to reduce the reflectivity, the glossiness, the map, and I'm going to change this, um, the color hue to, towards the dark towards darker so to just be darker a bit so i think that is okay okay we're going to work on this stone i was going to edit the now i'm going to edit this stone material and select the most appropriate material to fit in this stone so i'm going to click on the stone under material the material menu i'm going to go to indoor i'm going to go to indoor tiles because that's where i get my favorite masonry stones so i'm going to go to page three because there's a stone in particular i'm looking for that i'm going to click this poly tiles okay now the material is actually good remember after i clicked it i just double clicked it and this menu popped up so that's what you do just in case so the colorization is okay i'm going to reduce the gloss of course the glossiness reduce the reflectivity increase the relief a bit and i'm going to the map um, scale is okay so i'm going to go to the weathering now under the weathering i'm going to increase the weathering a bit if I increase it too much, it will look like a 100 years old um, relic building. So I'm just going to increase it a bit and I'm going to bevel these edges. This edges uh, bar actually means like the edges won't be sharp like as it is because in from the Revit, it's actually a, it's a perfect box. So this uh, edge is basically bevels the edges so it won't be completely smooth. So it should just be like beveled, giving it a more realistic view. Okay, that out of the way, we are going to now work on our illuminous materials or our lights. Personally, I don't use light bulbs. I actually model my light as a component in Revit. So I'm just going to, I modeled it and applied an illuminous material. But the illuminous material I applied is not actually illuminous. I just named it illuminous so I can make it illuminate in Lumion. Uh, if you don't understand what I just said, I'll just I'm just going to show you. So I'm going to click on it, click on this regular indoor, okay? Then click on metal. Because I love my colors being warm, I actually like using gold metal first. So I'm going to click on gold, double click on it. I'm going to reduce everything, the relief, the reflectivity, the gloss. I just want it plain, the map and everything. So I'm not going to go to emissive settings, and I'm going to increase this emissive to almost the max so the saturation i can increase the saturation but i don't want it to be too much i'm just going to leave the saturation at 1.0 and the lights become luminous i can also copy copy the the uh, material of the um, bulbs or the spotlight and place it on the cove rope light okay that is it for applying a luminous material and finally the last material i want to apply is the roofing material so i'm just going to click on the roofing material click on outdoor and go to roofing under roofing one of my favorite materials is actually this poly roofing slate it actually gives a simple and very crispy texture that i actually love so we're just going to rotate it because one thing about roof is that sometimes some of the um, some of the roofing sheets and the angle of the materials, like the way the materials are arranged, doesn't really fit into the um, placement of the roofing. For example, this side, the orientation of the roofing material is actually off. So I actually kind of modify it per view. Just for instance, if I'm picking a view from this approach, I'm going to make sure that this roofing, the roofing material on this uh, side of the roof is actually colorating with the direction of the water that is meant to flow there so i'm just going to go to this rotate orientation and change the heading to 90 degrees now this 
roofing slate is now pointing toward the side because i know if i'm picking a view from this approach predominantly is this place that will be the target for example let's go to our camera as you can see it's mainly this roof um, roofing sheet that is actually on display here so that is why i'll prioritize for this view as i'm changing the other views i'll be subsequently changing the orientation so i'm just going to change the orientation reduce the relief or increase the relief reduce the reflectivity reduce the glossiness and that is it we are good to go okay that is the end of our video today thanks for watching and please hit the like button hit the subscribe subscribe to our channel for more content like this hit the notification bell to get notified when we release a new video and have a nice day thank you